All right. Um, so like I said, my name is Alexis, and we have um, a couple people helping us today. Um, you'll hear from Heather, and you might hear from Hannah as we go ahead and go through it. So with that, we'll go ahead and go to our introduction slide. So today we're going to explore some Sumi-E brush painting strokes and explore how to paint a few different small animals. This class is meant to provide you with an introduction to very basic Sumi-E brush painting um, and provide you with a good foundation to explore more on your own. So um, before we jump into our demonstration of painting today, I wanted to give you guys a little background on what Sumi-E brush painting is. Sumi-E um, is sometimes called ink wash painting or brush painting. Um, it originated in China during the Tang Dynasty and spread throughout Asia. So you'll see um, different variations um, in China, Japan, all in that area. Um, so like I said, there are many variations of the form, but most are monochromatic and they typically use a limited range of tones within one hue. Um, so today we'll be using black ink. So our range of hues will vary from black to gray to light gray. Um, and you'll see that as we go through. Um, and then Sumi-E painting is about line and form rather than in-depth detail. So think about it as if you were painting with negative space um, and about forming the idea of the object rather than representing every specific part of it. Um, so here are some examples of Sumi-E paintings. You'll often see landscape paintings with mountains and trees or animal examples like the cat and the fish that you see here. Um, so before we jump into our demonstration, the supplies that you'll be needing for today's program would be thick paper, kind of like watercolor paper. Um, you just want it to be able to hold the water um, and liquid without crinkling and um, absorbing too much of it. Um, a round paintbrush with a point. So those are going to be the thicker bristles. Um, it doesn't have to be a hard point. You just have to be able to make dots and thin lines with it. Um, black paint. Um, I'm using acrylic paint that I've watered down to make almost a watercolor like paint. Um, since for this program, I was trying to um, grab paints that you might have at home. Um, but there is specific Sumi-E type ink. But um, like I said today, I'll just be using acrylic paint that I've watered down. Um, and I can show you kind of the level of consistency that you'll be looking for. And then you'll need water to, of course, do the watering down. Um, you can also grab just a, a like napkin or something to kind of dab off ex excess water if it gets too thick. And then um, a thin tip Sharpie, which is optional. Um, if you'd like to go back and add more details on your drawings once they've dried, but it's not required at all. So with that, we're gonna switch over to our demonstration. So like I said earlier, you have your watercolor paint, your round brush with a point. Um, I have the Sharpie with a thin tip here. And then here I have my Sumi-E ink, which is very liquid. It's not going to be that thick acrylic, um, but I have watered it down substantially. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started today with our basic strokes. So um, an example of what we're going to be looking at today with our uh, different strokes, I'm going to show you how to do thin lines, thick lines, dots, which have kind of smeared since I did this about 20 minutes ago. So be careful when you are waiting for things to dry. Um, bamboo leaf, thick, thin lines, press stroke, side stroke, and a freestyle line. So there we go. You're going to see quite a bit of difference in the colors when you're going through this. And that's to be expected um, since the paintbrushes typically are, they hold different water in different places. So you'll see different colors as we go through. 
So we'll start by making thin lines. Um, and I kind of get the tip of my brush, let me show you here, um, pretty dark with paint. And then we'll start with making the thin lines. So you'll just go through, you won't push down too hard as you go through it. You're just using that tip to get that nice thin line. Um, so as you can see here, there's already a variation in the color. Um, and it's just because I started running out of ink. And then if I go back through it, it is darker. Um, it's gonna have almost a black line. So that's how you do thin. Now, in order to do the thick ones, we're gonna get more paint on our brush and we're gonna push down a little harder so that it's more than just the tip that is making a line on our paper. We'll do that again so we can see that. And one more time. All right, so those are our thick lines. And then next we're gonna do dots. And this is why it's important to have that point on your brush because it's so much easier to do the dots this way. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Um, and they can vary in size. Um, for today's examples, we're gonna be using um, dots, but also kind of bigger dots, so almost blobs to make different animals like a panda or um, birds and things like that. So next we're going to do our bamboo leaf. And for our bamboo leaf, it's kind of combining a thin line and a thick line. You're gonna start with, by doing that thin line and then you're gonna push down a little harder and then end with a point like that. So it starts with a leaf or it starts with a thin branches out into that leaf shape and closes back up nicely. So we have a thin, thick, thin point. Thin, thick, thin point. All right. And then similar to our bamboo lines, we're going to do our thin, thick lines, which is just um, redoing this process, but several times down the line. So we have thick, thin, thick, thin. We'll do that again here. Thick, thin, thick, thin. And then one more time. Yep. Thick, thin, thick, thin. So kind of like that. Um, do we have any questions? All right. Nothing coming up so far, Alexis. Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and move on to the press stroke. Um, so this is more of an up and down motion of something similar to what we've been doing here. So you'll start thick up here and then move down. Start thick up here and move down. Thick and down. And people use these a lot to show like trees in the distance because um, you can kind of cluster them together and make that look very nice. Now with side strokes, you're gonna do a little bit different. You're gonna paint sideways with the long ridge of your brush this way. So for this, I recommend getting quite a bit more paint on your brush just so you have all that area to work with when you're going down. So you're gonna push and move sideways. Push and move sideways. Like that. And a lot of times this is the easiest way to show um, bamboo. All right, and then last we have our freestyle line. So with freestyle lines, they don't have to be any particular shape. Um, but you'd like to make nice curves or um, changes just to get a variation in color um, and thickness. Um, so like in the earlier example, we had this one, which showed like some misshading here and then 
a different sort of thickness here and it was thin at the end, but thick on this end. So you can kind of make them look different. Um, later on, we'll use a freestyle line to make the body of a dragon. So um, it's important just to know what your plan is when you're painting and then move through the motion like that. All right. So those are going to be our basic strokes. And now we're going to start on our first animal. And for that, I'm going to switch to a new sheet of paper just so we have a clean slate here. And our first one is going to be a snail. So we're going to be kind of using a freestyle line in the shape of a spiral at first to make that shell. So here we go. We're going to start here, go around, come back in. And there we go. You can always kind of go back through it. Um, this type of paint really lends itself to being moved around and kind of showing that shading. And as it dries, you will see different variations in the color um, just as the paper uh, takes on some of that ink. So we have our snail shell right here. And now we are going to move on to that freestyle line to make the body. And we're gonna do that in one long stroke. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start down here, come up and go up here and make that snail body. There we go. And so you've already noticed that we're already the um, ink, if you get too close to your shapes, it will start to bleed in. And you can just kind of move that around to get that shading elsewhere so it's not just a black blob here. Um, but we have our basic snail form here. And you can go back and if you want to make this a bigger snail shell here, you can. Just be careful that um, the ink doesn't spread where you don't want it to since it is very um, liquidy right now. So there's that. Now there's two ways you can add detail to something like this. Um, you can later go through and add details. Um, like here's an example I made earlier. Um, He's a little grayer. Uh, it just, it was about how much water I'd added to the mixture and I wanted a lighter snail to show the different um, hues in this ink. But what you can do later is you can go back through once your ink has dried and you can add detail with a fine tip Sharpie if you want to. I added a little smile and some eyes. Or you can use that, um, the tip of your paintbrush and make a very thin, thin line like this. And we'll give our snail friend here some eyes. Um, but that's how you'd make a snail. And so next we have a bunny. Now the bunny is really fun because it gets to be a giant blob and it does not have to be a perfect circle. But essentially what we're looking to make here is we're looking to make this bunny friend here. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Bunnies are not perfectly round. So really whatever shape you make here, it's okay. Um, and you're just making that circle shape here and filling it in. And then once you've done that, you can come up here. You don't connect the shapes, but you can just kind of make a triangle head right here and fill that in. And then you don't even have to add more paint for this. You just make one line kind of like that. It's going to be similar to our um, press stroke where you press and pull down. And there we have our bunny. And like I said, you can either make your um, details later once your ink has dried, or you can go back through with a um, thin tip uh, paintbrush and do a thin line here for your whiskers. And 
and then a smaller little circle down here for that bunny tail. And as it dries, you'll start to see um, the different hues in our paint, like here, up here with the um, rabbit ear. We have our gray going down into that black and the darker black down here. All right. So next we are going to move on to making a panda. And I'm actually gonna get a new sheet of paper for that, um, just because I'm going to show you how to make a larger panda. And so with our panda, we're gonna start with the head. So we're gonna use two blobs and they can be dark black um, since pandas are black and white rather than that gray. Um, so we'll be using the blobs, the dots, the thin lines and the side strokes to make a panda. So we have one ear right here and we're gonna make another one over here, don't make them too close because we do have to put a line in between the ears. They don't have to be the same exact shape, um, but it would be good if they were about the same size. And so after we do our ears, we're gonna come down a little bit and make some eyes right here. So we have one eye and these are gonna be more tilted blobs. And then another one right here. And oh. I think I saw a question about whether or not um, black was a common color for Sumi E ink. Is that what it was? Yes, it is. All right, perfect. So yes, um, black tends to, the black gray um, color tends to be what people commonly use. Although you will see variations where um, some people will add uh, like pink blossoms on a sakura tree or something like that, um, but they do tend to be monochromatic. So um, you will see that black, gray, um, light gray combo a lot. So with that, we'll, so we have the two ears up here and then we have the two sideways eyes. And I realize this is going upside down for y'all. So. Here are two ears, two eyes that are slightly tilted. And then we have one nose right here. And that's gonna be similar to our basic strokes. That's gonna be a dot. So you can kind of see the face start taking form here. Um, and next we're just going to kind of outline the face with a thin line up here. And then we're gonna do a sweeping motion, but again, a thin line here, almost like um, a very open C. And another one up here. And then we're gonna give him a little bit of a chin right there. So we have our panda face right here. Now I'm gonna turn this around just because we're gonna do a side stroke and side strokes are a little difficult to do upside down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our paint brushes pretty wet because we're gonna be taking a lot of that sweeping motion from the side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the side of our brush here and come down almost like he's giving himself a hug. So we'll do that here. We'll start here and come down in. Uh-oh, there we go. Got a big panda arm and we'll do that again over here. Oh. And one thing to note when you're working with really watery paints is sometimes you will get that fun <laughs> spray and that's, a, that's okay. It adds character to your painting. Um, so we have our two side strokes and now we're gonna do two more because so, he's gonna be sitting down and these are gonna be a little bit bigger or longer here. And then one more down here. And there we have our panda. Um, typically when I'm doing this, I don't give him any definition on the sides because like, like I said, we are painting kind of in the negative space, but if you like to, you can always give him some definition here on his sides. So that's how we make a panda. Now, uh, one of the things that pandas often are seen with is that bamboo. So we're gonna be reusing that side stroke that we used in the panda arm. 
but we're going to be going upward with it. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, because bamboo plants grow kind of tall. And since our panda friend here likes to eat a lot of bamboo, we are going to do another one over here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and you'll notice I'm not making them perfect um, because again, we're painting with the negative space. So, so long as they're kind of going in a line, you can kind of make it work. Now with the panda or with the bamboo plants, we're gonna use those thin lines to make a few more branches off of our bamboo plants. So we can go here, oops. We have a fun comment. This uh, painting type is very relaxing to watch and it's cute. <laughs> Great, it's a lot of fun. Um, you can kind of, it gets very relaxing to kind of watch all the paint spread, um, especially when you combine two areas like this, you kind of see different colors, um, similar to watercolor. Um, and then we have a few more lines. You can make it kind of branch out here and your bamboo plant can start really taking form here. All right, and since we learned how to do a bamboo leaf in our basic strokes, and I'll pull that back out so you guys remember, we will start thin, make our way to a thicker uh, middle and then ending back, oops. Okay, and then ending back at that thin line down here. And we'll add some bamboo leaves. We'll go thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, like that. So you can kind of start making your own little um, landscape art like that. And then if you wanted to add more detail to your bamboo lines to just give your bamboo sections more um, definition, you can always add little thin lines here to show off those bamboo sections. All right, and I'll turn this around so you guys can see it. And there you go. And one thing to note, as things start to dry, and this ink is notorious for drying quickly, you are able to go back and add more shading. Um, like I mentioned, this style is also called ink wash painting because you can layer um, several layers of paint on top of each other to get a different shade of it. So right here, we have a lot of very light gray, but if I were to add, take more paint and add to like this side here, it would dry with more shading on this side. So you can kind of go through and see exactly where you'd like to add more shading to your bamboo plant or any of your other um, animals that we've made today. All right. So with that, we'll go ahead and move on to our final animal friend. And our final animal friend today is going to be that really fun dragon. So with that, we're going to reuse our freestyle line that we talked about in the beginning. Um, and with that, we are going to make sure that we make it long enough so that we have enough room on our top and bottom to add parts to our dragon, like his wings and his legs. But we're also making sure that um, it follows kind of the path that a body of a dragon would make. So with that, we will start here and move through. All right, so as you can see, um, 
my freestyle line is very, it has some of these areas where it's uh, kind of lost some of the paint and that's okay. Um, this is either you can use that style or you can go back through later and add some shading um, like this to give it a little bit more definition, especially if you want it to be thicker in some areas. Like I kind of want this area down here to be a little thicker. So I'll use some of that shading up here and down here. All right, so we have the body of our dragon now. And next we are going to do four S-shaped legs. So we have two legs, one here, one here, and two back here, one here and one here. So we'll do a thicker S-shaped line here and one down here and one up here and one up here. And with these legs, we're going to do some thin squiggly lines here for his claws. All right, so we are kind of seeing our dragon take form now. So next, we are going to kind of come up to about the middle and we're going to do a sweeping down thick line and then a thick line up here. And I'll turn this around so you guys can see kind of what I'm looking at. So we have the body and the head is going to be up here. The tail is going to be down here. And then we have our wing right here. So from here, we are going to do a couple more thick lines down. So we have one, two, three, and then we're gonna come back up and connect those like this. So we have our dragon wing, and then we can come up next to it and do another one that's kind of hiding behind this one like that. So we have our dragon so far with his wings and his legs and his tail down here. And now we can do our press stroke again to give him some scales. I'll turn this back around, but I promise I'll bring it right back to show you all. So here we go. We we'll go down, down, press down, press down, press down. And so we're just giving our dragon some dragon spikes along his back ridge. Perfect. Now, our next move is to kind of give more definition to our dragon belly down here. So we're gonna take our brush and make sure we have a good, nice point on the top. And we're gonna do that thin line and kind of curve it under so that we're giving him his scaled stomach down here. Come back down here, like that. And so we kind of have our dragon so far. Now he just needs his head right there. So we're gonna make sure we get some paint on our brush and then we're gonna do another big thick line right here. And that is going to be one of our dragon's horns. And you can go back through and give it some uh, deeper color if you want to, um, like this. All right, and now we should have two horns for our dragon right there. Now this next part is going to be doing a lot more of those thin lines. So if you need to get some of your paint off your brush, you can do that. Um, but what we're going to do right now is we are going to make his eyes. So what, how we do that is with our dots, we have one here and one here. And like I said, they don't have to be perfect, but we would like them to be about the same size. And then we're going to do a thin line here and 
the thin line here. And so we have our dragon eyes so far. Now we are going to do a thin curving line to make the dragon snout. So we'll do like this and this. And then we need to make a nostril. So we're going to do similar to the eye right here. We're going to do that here and here and connect it right there. Then we can come back through and do our dragon face. So we have the snout here and then we can give him a little bit of a smile and some dots and then we're going to give him a little bit of a dragon mane here. So we're going to do that with our bamboo leaf brush stroke almost. And then we'll come back down here, give him his bottom row of teeth, thin, thin lines. Perfect. And there we have our dragon. If you are feeling up to it, you can always give him some smoke and flames right here. Because of course our dragon breathes fire. And there we go. We have our dragon and you can always add more detail. You can add more shading as you go through it. Um, if you do feel like he needs yeah, some. Is help. there any way to shade the dragon head is our yes. next question we just received. Yes. Um, so depending on how much ink you've put on your eyes, I'd recommend waiting until it dries. But you can always make sure you can always have multiple cups of this ink, some more watered down than others. If you want easy access to lighter colors, um, I've just been using the same one and kind of wearing down my brush to get that gray. But you can absolutely go through here um, and fill in some of your dragon face. Um, I'm not going to do too much because it's still pretty wet up here. Um, but once it's dry, like here, I'll show you on one of our earlier ones. So as you can see with our snail friend, he is pretty dry at this point. Um, and like I said, uh, it tends to dry lighter than when you put it down. So if you remember, this area was really, really black when we first started but it's very wet or dry at this point. So I'm not really gonna mess anything up if I put more ink on it. Um, so once your dragon head has dried a little bit, you can always go back through and just paint right over top of it. Um, so long as it's not too dark and you'll start to get that shading. So if you can see here, um, it's layering that color and you're getting a darker gray when you go through it. Um, and same with down here. And like now I can add a little smile that'll show up. Um, so does that kind of answer the question? Yes. Okay. Do you have a preference in the brand of ink or brush? I, I don't have a preference. Um, like I said, I was, when I picked out the this ink it's acrylic paint um so i just watered it down but typically there is a type of ink called sumi e ink um, that you can find pretty much on any retailer um that you can use and it's actually going to come pre-watered down it's going to be a little bit um it's going to be pre-mixed or uh, there is a special type if you want to be very very professional you can grind it yourself, mix the dust with the water um, yourself and do it that way. Um, and then brush wise, any round brush that has a nice tip is really helpful. They do come in a lot of different sizes um, and you're just going to get that variation in um, line size when you do it like that. So I'll put this back and then we can go back to our dragon. 
Um, so as you can see here, we are already seeing it drying in a lot of areas. Um, even on the dragon face, we're seeing a different color pattern here um, between what I put down earlier and what um, I just painted. So you are able to go back through and start adding shading um, here and up here. And like I said, it does dry pretty quickly, so long as it's not too thick of paint. The more water it has, the faster it's going to dry. Um, so that, that's pretty helpful whenever you're doing things like this. Um, since you might not be able to do uh, all the details or all the layers to the different paint that you want to do at once, but um, it does dry pretty quickly. So with that, um, that is our last animal friend for today. Um, did anybody have any questions about either the dragon or the style or anything else we've painted today um, or anything like that? Not seeing anyone else. Oh, we have someone says their wife loved it. Awesome class. <laughs> Not Great. seeing any other questions coming in. We can give it a minute or so in case anyone else has questions. All right. Well, or about the paint, Alexis. Um, oh, yes. When you water it down, is there a specific consist consistency? Should it look like just a, a dirty glass of water, or um, should you experiment with different type, different consistencies? Oh, can you go back to the? Hold on, one second. Okay. So whenever you're doing it, um, you kind of want it to look like a dirty glass of water, but you want to make sure it's still very dark. Um, I don't. It's kind of hard to see here but it's, it's still pretty dark. Um, there's not an exact measurement. You're kind of playing with it um, a lot. You want to make sure it's not too thick. You want to make sure that it does wiggle pretty much like water would, um, but you really want to make sure it retains that color um, because if you have it too much as watered down, um, like dirty paint water, it, you won't get that deep black or that deep gray. You're only going to get that like light, like gray, and you're not going to be able to see the different shading. Does that answer that question? <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Oh, I don't see any other questions that have come up in our chat. Okay. Um, well, with that, we will conclude our program for today. Um, so thank you again for attending our virtual program. And you can always find more resources on our website, um, which is planolibrary.org, and on our blog, uh, planolibrarylearns.org. And also, we do have some fun Sumi ebooks at the library that would teach you some basic techniques, or if you want to get advanced, you could see what some of the other ones have. Um, but we have quite a few books spread out across the libraries. So thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it.